Hey there, terrible warriors. Welcome to a special recording. We're here around the table with uh, some uh, other players, new and, and, and uh, I don't want to say new and old. Mm. You know I mean? uh, I'm Justin Eacock. I'm going to be your GM again for this campaign. Uh, we uh, actually, this is a funny set. We were set up to record another game, and uh, hopefully you have already heard that, and this is being recorded out of place. So I want to thank uh, my players at the table for being so game. Uh, while we're here, my intention for November was to go back to re-releasing all of the interviews I have done at conventions throughout the year, uh, including at Breakout and a few more I did at Gen Con. Um, and, and maybe I still will. I don't know. Follow us on Twitter at Dice Warriors to find out what I'm now thinking of in November because it's still September. And so here we are, though. While I was at Gen Con and I came up with the idea to do that Kickstarter special you listened to, rest in peace, Justin, you're I'm, I'm wiped out now. I was at Gen Con at the Magpie booth to show off a game called Zombie World. And you've heard me talk about it. If you are a Patreon supporter, you've already played this game. I've done this as part of our private game. And it worked out really well. It actually worked out really well with the Patreon uh, players because uh, this game is also uh, fully integrated into Roll20, uh, which at the time this game kickstarted, it wasn't possible because of all the card mechanics. Roll20 didn't by default, really support that. And so Mark Diaz Truman, one of the creators on this game and one of the co-founders of Magpie Games, worked really closely with Roll20 to get them up to speed on what the requirements of this was. So it's now available as a module. And if you buy this game, you also get, I think, like a discount code uh, to get it on Roll20 as well, which is kind of neat. So so if you're listening to this, you're going like, this sounds like fun, but all my friends are online. And this is possible because as it'll be interesting for us on the podcast because there is a bit of a visual element. So we will just describe the theater of the mind. Uh, but it is all, uh, it is a powered by the Apocalypse game that is diceless, entirely card based, and requires no printouts in advance, which is one of the reasons why we're playing it today as a sort of a quick little backup game. Uh, and for me, it's also an example of how quick it is. It's a full game in a box. Open it up and it spits out. And I don't have to have like even when we're playing games like Masks, which are very quick games to pick up and play, I still have to at least find a printer to print things out or have a bunch of blank pieces of paper that I can write things down on. That is not necessary with Zombie World. Everything the three of my players are going to see today came out of this box right now and is, is how it's intended, which is kind of fun. And this rule book is like 30 pages and I'm not even going to look at it. Uh, he literally threw it I across the room, by the way. across the room. So... I should welcome you, because I am not alone at this table, to my players who are joining us for this campaign. Uh, starting at my right, your left, back from, uh, what was the last game you played? What was the last game I played? Uh, was it, it Night Witches? No. I feel like you came back since Night I Witches. Have. I was definitely back for Paranoia, which is after Paranoia, Night Witches. Paranoia, yeah. And then there was one other one. Hmm. Uh, Leon and Lavino were at the table. It was uh, Forbidden Lands. Forbidden then. Lands. Yeah, very cool. Forbidden yeah. Lands just had a Kickstarter. We didn't play it here. Uh, the Bitter Reach, uh, a new book set in the land north of the Forbidden Land. Ooh. In the frozen wastes, truth has been buried for millennia. Uh, and I think it touches into like the origin of the elven soul gems and the wanderer <sighs> that crossed the sky and a lot of like dwarven lore and that. So it goes like if Forbidden Lands is all about human history history in Ravenland, the Bitter Reach goes further into the ancient past and to the origins of the world itself and how things got to where they were before humans had arrived. And so, uh, uh, cause up until this point, the North was just where the still mist was. And the still mist is where elves would retire when they were just done with being immortal and they would just go off into the still mist and never be seen from again. Well, if you keep going further, you arrive in the Bitter Reach. And that's where that campaign mm. is. So, oh, so well, good. there's a very good chance because I was a Kickstarter backer on that, that we're going to play that in the new year. So oh, uh, well then. it's just one of those like, you know, of all the games I would want to return to, that is one of them. So it's really mm -hmm. good. It and really uh, they're fun. also uh, the same rules of Forbidden Land is been adapted. The same group, Freely Games, are doing the Alien RPG. Uh, based off of like the Ridley Scott Alien wow. franchise, uh, so it's That's like a, a it's licensed. Yes. Yeah, all of so, our eyebrows raised. On yeah, that. <laughs> so <laughs> you remember in Forbidden Lands, rolling the dice yeah. would like hurt your stats. Yeah. In Alien the RPG, they've changed it around where whenever you push a roll, you get more dice it added permanently to your pool for the rest of the game. That is called stress die. And the more stress die you get, the more successful you'll become. You get more focused when you're stressed. If you ever roll a one on the stress die. You consult the panic chart. Now, at first, that's fine. You're just gonna, you're not gonna panic really until you get an eleven or higher. And so that's, if you only got one die, you can't get higher than six. So that's cool. So you, you 
start getting stress die. And eventually the stress is going to get too much to handle and you're going to start getting consequences on the stress on the panic table. Early on, it's going to be fine. Shaky hands. Uh, you you freeze a moment. You drop something. You get a little fumbly. And that's whatever. But as you go further down that panic table, it starts to spread. Other players have to now make panic rolls no. because of your panic oh, results. No. And then you start screaming. And then you start going things like, game over, man. Game over. And or and then the very t- uh, bottom is you just are catatonic. And so it's, uh, <laughs> so it's a game that's really... And, and uh, if you've ever played the Battlestar Galactica board game... Um, yes. So yes. at the beginning... Because Alien isn't just about fighting xenomorphs. It's about greed and corporate interference and other... So at the beginning of character creation, ev- the GM assigns each player agendas that are yes, secret no one right. only to those players some of those are like you have a sister back home and you're sending half of your pay to her to pay for her medica uh, medication and her, her like all the, the care she needs so when the corporation says if you don't do this job you forfeit your shares in the company you don't get paid that's a big fucking deal to you mm-hmm. so you're gonna make mm-hmm. sure you are going to get paid or other players are like uh you know one more job and you'll have your debt paid off you'll be able to get your own ship right uh some of them will be you're secretly an android working for the other corporation and no one knows that you're not actually a human or that you're you're not human and so if you once you reveal that you're an android all your stats go up and Uh change Uh uh, and you can hide the fact that you're an android up until the point that you bleed because you bleed white (gasps) and so it's uh so it's, it's it's kind of fun um and then at the end of each act, the players secretly hand back their agenda to the GM. They say, yes or no, did you meet it? You then get a token that you can then cash in on the next act for an automatic success. So there's a real carrot to that agenda uh, to if you can do it, I'm going to give you this like get out of jail free card. And then act two, I give you an escalated agenda. All right. Well, your sister's sick. You got to send your money back. Well, in act two, things are going to hell. There's no chance you're going to get money. So now you're going to st- Take as much valuables as you can and get out of here. It doesn't matter who you leave behind. Oh, wow. Right? And so it, it escalates, it escalates, it escalates until uh, until the third act. And then and that's when, like, everything is hitting the fan. Uh, and as players die, um, the GM is encouraged to, like, introduce other characters that are in cryostasis or another ship or people that, like, you find new in the air vent. So now someone's going to play the kid that you've found. Right. And, and so you play over because by the time you get to the end of the third act, there really should only be, like, one person left alive, right? right. And so that person's going to be, you know, our Ripley making it out mm-hmm. as the rest of the players are sitting around just watching the final bit of oh, this so horror so that's, that's very exciting. Anyway, that's not what we're playing today, but that's no. getting into it. We are, we are playing a, a horror genre. But yeah, that was kind of fun. So welcome back, Joe. Thank it's you. nice to see you Good here to be with here again. us. Uh, back from uh, Star Trek, from the Living Campaign, uh, right. not playing a Star Trek game. Uh, well, I, I mean, I'm still going to play this like a Star Trek character, probably. <laughs> I just won't be able to beam out at the other end of this. No, no, no. Uh, Velvet Duke from Welcome the back. Dandies. And how how, how have uh, you been since you were last here, uh, Velvet? I know you just did like a whole fringe tour. I did. I did Toronto, Windsor, and Victoria. Oh, my goodness. Uh, oh, the show was called Personal Demon Hunter. I got to share my utmost vulnerability but i also got the audience involved oh, i got them to share as well every single show the vulnerability was inside us all along all along yeah <laughs> it was the force uh and yet i didn't have to force anybody some people i had to go okay so moving on that's excellent uh, yeah no it was a it was a great time uh very personally um validating yeah and and encouraging it now sets me on a path to want to do more shows uh, and more uh, more music. Well, if you ever want to take uh, a podcast on the road, um, All right. I just everything here is mobile, and I'm at your service. Let's uh, anyway, do it. Congratulations on everything. That's super rad. I, I know Thank I've been you. following on on that, and I just love like um, you're not just part of an ensemble with the dandies. That's a big part, like the the, yes. the Star Trek show. Uh, but uh, it's it's been really fun to see Velvet Duke. Uh, doing Velvet Duke, so Thank that's you. been that's been really cool. So, uh, so this is going to be really fun for you and I because uh, we haven't not we haven't played a different game together. Yes. Whereas, like Joe, yeah. you, this is all you do for for Velvet. I, we get to actually experience a different genre at the table today. And so, I love it. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Brand new uh, to the table, uh, uh, Joe grabbed you uh, by the scruff of your neck and. <laughs> Pulled you into the, into the and, and you actually thought we were playing a different game. Oh yes, and I'm hoping that is still a game that by now everyone will have listened to and it'll be awesome. But uh, uh, circumstances beyond our control, probably the just the curse of Halloween. And uh, here we are. We're going to play Zombie World instead. So you, you're game for this. Thank you. Um, welcome, uh, Sean. 
Hi, thank you for welcoming to your show. This yeah. is fantastic. I'm really excited to game with you guys. And you're saying, uh, you, you were mentioning, uh, we're just, uh, we're meeting for the first time, Sean, yeah, yeah. so tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, you, well, I'm like new, to new to you, but not new to gaming. Uh, I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons for years and years and years. Uh, lots of other games. I've had an Arkham Horror game going on this week. Have you ever played Powered by the Apocalypse? I have not played any oh, Powered by the Apocalypse games. I think games. this is a really good game to introduce people to PBTA because it's uh, it's real fast and, and, and light. Um, so to to catch you up with what powered by the apocalypse game so they're not a rule set like right. roll 20 or 2d 20 or, or things like that um although it sometimes is kind of talked like it is it's really more a design philosophy it's a framework for making your games and telling your games pbta powered by the apocalypse based off of apocalypse world was the first game to do it which is why it's got that name uh are games that are um the rules are very player forward facing uh as a gm i actually you will see have nothing in front of me all this stuff is actually just materials for the players there's nothing here for the gm the gm is playing off of answers that the players are creating as we go and uh i actually i'm gonna have to grab a pencil and a notepad so i can keep track of these things but that's kind of all there's no preparation done in advance uh some pbta games require a little bit of preparation in advance like dungeon world and masks and uh to to a degree but even then you have to remain open on what the players are presenting to you they are very collaborative story games uh where in a game like pathfinder or shadow run or uh, dungeons and dragons they they lend themselves to more combat simulation with room for role playing but the combat is a real pillar of that game there is combat in this game but it's going to be handled on a macro scale it's much more chaotic in in a pbta game things move a little out of control and that's kind of the point we're in this car going down the hill and the brakes don't work uh and so uh pbta games um uh, interesting talking to the one of the creators of this game they're working on another one called armored society and they've decided not to do pbta for the first time in magpie's games for a long time because they're looking for something a little more granular to be able to tell this slower like dueling and and combat that goes with this society that they're making and so pbta just didn't work for that because they it, it was too out of control where it really works in a game like zombies or urban shadows or monster hearts where you don't want to feel like you're ever totally in control of the situation. So mm -hmm. the story kind of, I, I liked the creator of Monster Hearts put it as the game remains feral. It just Ooh, sort of like sits that. between the players in the middle of the table and no one really has a say. In particular with this game is Zombie World is diceless. It's entirely done with a deck of cards. And so I'll, I'm just going to deal them out right now uh, in front of me. So we get a, a past deck. We get a present deck, and these are our character creation cards. Um, and what was really fun is I've got this down to an art because I reset this like a thousand times while I was working at, uh, at Gen Con at the booth. Is being you know come right up. I was like your Barker and uh, getting people together. Um, and I'm thinking today if we want. Uh, rather than just play with the core box, we can also include the expansion decks, which add. Ooh. So by the core, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for stroking my ego. Um, We're here for you. In uh -huh. the core deck, uh, we have a choice to make very early on is uh, this game is about being survivors in a zombie world. And in this, uh, a situation you have scraped and crawled and fought your way to this point in your life now where you are finally for now safe in this enclave you have found this community you have found these walls and by default we have the choice of the hospital or the prison if we add in the expansion pack we can also choose between the farm or the mall and if we also do that i will also shuffle in additional population cards additional present past and trauma cards so that uh, we have more kind of a more randomness added to that. Is that what we're, or it looks uh, like? Let's Ooh. go. Yeah. Game? Let's, let's jump into the deep end. What yeah. are you, what are you interested in staying here? Uh, then uh, the prison, the hospital, the farm or the mall. I feel like we've been to doing? the mall recently. Yeah, that, nudge, that sounds nudge. familiar. So let's, uh, I, my vote would be for the farm because when I was watching Walking Dead, that was the part where I got excited for the show is the, I, here are two communities coming together. How do they work together? How do their personalities mesh? I didn't enjoy how it went from there, but that uh, setting 
for a zombie apocalypse was exciting to me. Cool, cool, cool. And it's more fresh. We've seen a lot of urban zombie apocalypse settings yeah. before. Yeah, for sure. Haven't yeah. done a lot of farm stuff. So. Yeah. And when I was a little kid, I wanted to be a farmer. That was like what nice. I wanted to be when I grew up. Awesome. And was there, uh, what kind of farm did you want to have? A uh, vegetable farm. Of course. Yeah. 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 So this brings up a good point, uh, not to uh, put Joe on the spot. Uh, mm. One thing we didn't talk about right before we started playing was safety rules. Uh, we uh, have mentioned this when we played Ross Rifles, and we bring it up every now and then on the show to remind remind you, my dear listener, on, on these options that you have. Um, we were talking before we started recording about the X card, and I've mentioned the X card a couple of times. In a game like this, it really is going to be helpful uh, because we're dealing with themes of horror, of violence, of gore. Um, we're also potentially dealing with things like drug use and, um, uh, you know, other other topics like that, depending on the characters that we may or may not meet. Um, so with that said, the X card uh, sits right there. We just got a little card with an X drawn onto it. It is just designed that if anything at all happens in the game that you just, you're not cool with, you're not, you're not, you're not, you don't like the joke that was just mentioned. You don't like the setting that is just introduced. You don't like the solution that was just proposed or, or the descriptions that are going on. Uh, you can you can evoke the X card. Either tap it, you lift it up, just say I'm using the X card uh, or, or anything really. We will identify what the offending material is. Uh, we will either rewind uh, or fade to black or strike it for the record. Um, it is not a condemnation on anyone who introduced that to the table. It is just, this isn't going to work for us today. We all want to keep having a fun time and enjoy ourselves. So I, we will find the solution. We do not need to identify why. We just need to do what and how to move forward. So I love it. identify yeah. what it is and and like we can go back, do it again. You do that a lot in improv or you, know, you hit the red button and you go back and you do it again. Or we immediately fade to black. You know, this character is going to die, but we don't need to play it out. Or this sex scene is going to happen, but we don't need to role play it out. Mm. And it could just, draw the curtains camera pans to the right and we move on time passes or um or it's just there's no way to fix this we're just it just didn't happen and uh and 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 we just cut it out and we'll um we'll just either either move forward or do the scene again uh it's fine so that's that's kind of what that is for um the other thing we're, we you could do as players uh that uh we may decide or not uh here at the table i personally haven't actually run a game with with this safety tool yet uh, but i find it fascinating it's called lines and veils in lines and veils uh what players do is they each get a card uh that has you know the top half is lines the bottom half is veils a line is do not cross it uh we don't if if it's written here, um, drug use or pregnancies or uh, animal cruelty, that is a no-go. Uh, so that is then shuffled in and it's presented to the table. We don't identify who wrote what. The GM will just mention, these are our lines for this game. These are the things that are just red light. The veils are... I'm a little concerned about this or it doesn't need to get into detail. Like I understand it's a zombie game. We're going to be dealing with gore, but I don't want to necessarily see it. So that's the stuff that we just keep behind the curtain, right? It will happen, but we don't have to describe it and get into gratuitous detail on, right? Uh, and again, um, they're randomized and the GM will write their owns down and uh, maybe make more than there are players at the table. And, and then that's just kind of done. And then that list is sort of is left displayed these are the things that we use or don't use and it's just it's a good indication it's really good in a convention setting or in a setting where you're yeah. playing with strangers you haven't met uh, i actually find our x card uh, we bring it up in a lot of the podcast but because we're playing with listeners it tends to not be something anyone uses or we also break down every hour and so we get to talk and and, and work right. so it, it it it's a thing that is something that I want to mention, uh, especially for anyone who's thinking of picking this game up. They have that going for them. Can I get some help shuffling these decks? Because I just opened sure. up. I have never opened up the farm or mall deck before, Ooh. so this is fresh. So uh, we might edit this little bit out, but I'm just going to give you this really big present deck. Just okay. give that a good shuffle, Velvet. You're going to shuffle the past deck. Uh, I'm going to give you the big old population oh, deck there. We all get to see how bad and, a shuffling uh, I don't need to shuffle advantages because those cards are revealed face up. And, and Joe then, is hiding a card just for themselves. Already hiding <laughs> a card. I see, I see. <laughs> I'll shuffle the trauma deck. That seems appropriate. For uh, are you comfortable with Riffle Shuffle or would you prefer not? Um, I, As long as like... 
I don't want to get any of the cards bent. They're not protected okay. right now, and we don't want to see anything that might mark them later, sure. right? Uh, but if you if you feel like you could shuffle them up that way, like have at it. I'll do a few gentle ruffles and then just because there were the the, the core box was already quite shuffled. I've played it several times, okay, but the okay. mall and farm deck were just kind of <laughs> added. Oh, oh no, I have a past. <gasps> oh, oh, look no. at you! How did that get into Everybody the has a past. <laughs> Tends to sneak its way into the present sometimes. All and what's fun machinery. is uh, oh, yeah. the Kickstarter perks, uh, which if it's Magpie has a, uh, uh, with Bluebeard's Bride, they had a lot of things that were behind the Kickstarter wall that they then this year put out uh, public, like the tarot cards. So maybe it'll be available publicly one day. Their exclusive decks for the Kickstarter backers were the Carnival. Ooh. Oh. Or the Amusement Park, sorry, it was the Amusement Park. Mm. And the Caravan. Ooh, All right. I want to do the and the caravan is really too. interesting because it could also be used if you're playing a long form game of this to bridge. If you have to leave an enclave, you become a caravan oh. as you search for a new place That's to call so home. Good. Right? Because so right now there isn't really a rule for that. The one buy in here is if the enclave falls, so does our game. Right. Um, if you leave the enclave, you're making a new character, uh, things like that. Right. So that's that's the one. The enclave is our main character that we are that right. we are focusing around. Mm-hmm. And so that's 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 the thing that happens. Um, so what so. I like about the, the premise of this style of game is it's collaborative, which means it's us against the world. Yeah. As mm-hmm. opposed yeah. to even as GM, I'm not even like. It's not antagonistic. I'm not yeah. out to get you. Yeah. My role is to present problems, not solutions, and to just follow where your individual interests are are taking us. And then the survivor deck is representing our old dice rolls. In a Powered by the Apocalypse game, most of the games, uh, they're done. You roll two d6s. Anything under a six is considered a miss. The GM will tell you what happens. Anything that's seven to nine is a hit, but with consequences. And a 10 plus, you get it. So in a survivor deck for this game, you will get misses, edges, which are the near hits, triumphs, which is a, you absolutely get it, and an opportunity, which counts as a miss, but can be turned into a triumph if you mark off stress. Ooh. Ooh, you guys Sorry, can so we do nervous. that one again? I missed that one there. Ooh. <laughs> I like it. Thank you, guys. Oh. You're the best. That's collaboration. For uh, uh-huh. I, I will also say that uh, I, you shouldn't cut out the deck shuffling moment mm. because you could use that as ASMR. There was a moment where like, I stopped just because I was enjoying the sound, the different uh-huh. shuffle sounds, depending how close you were to me. Oh. All right. So the, uh, the bite <laughs> card is also like the survivor deck. But if you think about it, if we were to put being bitten by a zombie to a dice roll, it might go very bad where everyone gets bit or it might go very good where no one gets bit. And neither of those outcomes are good in a genre like this. We want someone. So the Survivor deck, which replaces our dice rolls for our hits, misses, and triumphs, is shuffled every single time after we use it. The Bite deck, I'm shuffling it now and I will not reshuffle it again until that Bite card is found. And so throughout the whole game, it's slowly rising to the top. Right. Uh, the Bite card is drawn whenever we are in encounters with the zombies or the result of certain misses uh, in, in some of the moves that you have. You will see we have a basic move sheet, Sean. I know this is your first time here at Power. Is this your first Power by Apocalypse game to uh, Velvet? Yes, yeah. yeah, so uh, the players have basic moves. These are moves that everyone has. Uh, they include things like, um, uh, you'll, you'll see, they're all prompts. They're all triggers uh, in, in the narrative. When you get in someone's face, when you turn to violence, when you ask an NPC for help, when you open up to someone, when you calm an NPC down, when you assess a bad situation, when you try to avert disaster, when you help or interfere, or when you push yourself. Um, on your character sheets, you also have uh, asking an NPC when you direct your ally to action and suffer serious harm. Those are all moves that are shared by everyone. When I hand out your past and your present and your trauma cards, they all also have moves that are unique to your players. Your past and your trauma cards will start face down. Not even the GM will know what those cards are. The past card will have a condition that if you can succeed at meeting that, you can reveal that card to the table. So for the cop, you can reveal to the table that you used to be a cop by showing someone your badge. 
And then mm. you flip that card up, you now get access to the cop move. Also, everyone knows you used to be a cop. So depending on the situation and the location we're at, might that might be, be a good or bad thing. Also, depending on the current role that you're playing. Um, <laughs> As well as when you help or interfere with a player, you can draw one card from the survivor deck for every card that that player has face up. So at the beginning of the game, you can only assist with one card. But by the end, if our trauma and our past cards have been revealed, you can draw three cards, right? So the more you know someone, the more you can help yes. or interfere with them, right? Lovely. And uh, the, pa- the present card... Uh, you might not be able to choose who you used to be. Let me actually uh, hand me those decks back. Let's sure. do the character creation right now, yeah. and I will just reveal the rules in play. So I'm going to hand out each of you a past card. Uh, you don't get to choose who you used to be. This will start face down. You can have a look at it. You should have a look at it. It will tell you also the, who you used to be, so it gives you a nice little prompt on maybe how to play your character. It'll also uh, tell you a unique move that only you will have access to, but only when that card is face up. It'll also tell you how to reveal to different people. So I've mentioned the cop. You show a badge to someone. Someone a little bit more involved. In order to reveal to someone that you used to be an actor, you have to tell another player that something you told them was a lie. So it, it takes a couple of steps to get there. So they're yeah. intentionally designed so that it's not going to be possible for everyone to reveal all their past at the same time. Some are more like beginning of game reveals. Some are more late game reveals, depending. So you have to kind of work into it. So so is it possible to only reveal to one person at a time or do you have to no, reveal to the No, it would be revealed table? to the table. Yeah, because it's revealed to the audience. We're also, you're not just playing your survivor. You're also playing the... Um, the audience watching this this zombie show as well. For sure. So you don't get to choose who you used to be, but you do get a little bit of say of who you currently are. I'm going to give you two cards. They're going to be face up on the table, and you're going to choose one of them and give the other one back to me. This represents the role or the place in the social order in our enclave that you currently have. And uh, uh, it also will have a move that is unique or, or a change in your stats. So I will give you uh, for um, Joe, you could choose to be the survivor or the visionary. For Velvet, you can choose to be the Scout or the Prophet. Ooh. For Sean, you can choose to be our Heavy or the Guardian. What's fun with the Prophet is you'll actually get like a little cult. You'll get you'll immediately start with <laughs> oh some my. followers. That join I feel like it's you. on the nose for uh, my last joining of you. <laughs> given that I was Bajoran, should I be the Prophet? Mm-hmm. I think I should. Mm-hmm. Excellent. So, so so give me back the card you're not using. Uh, Wait, you're oh, a prophet no. at a farm in a zombie apocalypse? This can only go well. <laughs> uh, the Bajorans <laughs> worship the prophets oh, yes. in Deep Space Nine. What are you thinking there, Sean and Joe? Mm-hmm. So I have something that I don't actually understand. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dross, quote, so when a, the visionary says, when you open up to someone by talking about your vision of, for the future of the enclave, draw steel. Okay, so those are your soul. stats. So we, we're going to get to that right after I draw these cards out because I was kind of doing things a little backwards. Uh, you, you're going to have four stats, savagery, soul, steel, survival. They represent how many cards you can draw whenever you use a skill that calls for that number. So savagery is your capacity for violence. Soul is your empathy and your ability to connect to people. Steel is how well you harden yourself to the stress around the world. And survival Survival is the one you go to when nothing else works. And so that's your that's your MacGyver. That's your last ditch stat. It's kind of the luck stat in this game. Mm-hmm. So you will assign a three, two twos, and a one to any of those stats. But I'll let you get your cards first so you have an idea of what's going to work for you. So you'll see the visionary. E, e, let me see that again. So with the visionary in particular, uh, when you open up to someone, you can roll, you can use your steel stat instead of your empathic soul stat. So because uh, Because your, your vision is based on reason, not just on on your on a gut instinct right like you can tell like no it is going to be better one day and these are the reasons why right right so you right could be, you could be our Greta Thunberg in the uh <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm gonna go with the heavy out of these two okay cool tell us about the heavy what does it say uh so the heavy uh, people rely on you to put down the bad things and you are happy to do the job uh you clear a stress when you eliminate a significant danger to the enclave and you get plus one savagery cool what are you looking at I think I'm actually going to, oh gosh, I'm really, I'm torn because I feel like. Don't having... get attached. These characters can die quickly. Oh, but... oh okay. No, yeah, but do get attached. I love it when they get attached. <laughs> <laughs> so I feel like it might be really interesting to have the visionary and the prophet at the same time. Yeah. yeah. I think we could like kind of do yeah. something with that. Yep. So maybe like the survivor mm. also sounds cool. But I think I'm going to okay. choose the visionary. So place the visionary on your character sheet. Place those cards. Place the past card face down over the past column and the present card face up. So this lets all of our 
lets me as the GM also know where to look, Sean. If I'd appreciate it if you did, Got it. do the same thing. Now, uh, you oops, didn't get oops, here. I didn't flip anything. I don't know what you're That's talking fine. about. I didn't see it. No <laughs> one saw it. Uh, you didn't get here by accident. Along the way, you have developed certain coping mechanisms. Mm. These cards, like your past card, these are true and active. Uh, but you will not suffer the consequences of what's written on the card unless it's revealed. Now, consequences, these also give you another way to clear your stress. Most of the present cards give you an option on how you clear your stress. Uh, the trauma gives you some more mechanisms, but they're like, <laughs> they also come with some usually destructive personality traits. You'll see on your character sheet, you have um, a stress track on the bottom left. If that fills up, to five, I will give you another trauma card face down. Oh if you ever get a fourth trauma card, you are no longer safe to remain in the enclave. We'll make you a new character. So these things have a way oh. of stacking. That's like one of the ways this character can get eliminated. So I will give you a trauma card face down there, Joe. You can have a look at it. That's that's true to your character now. Trauma cards, unlike past cards, which can be revealed by a specific condition on the card, trauma cards can be revealed whenever you are suffering stress or isolation. So you can just be like, I'm just showing my stress card now. And then usually by showing how you are coping with the stress right now. Uh, and so uh, there are also good prompts for for you. If you don't like, I don't know what my character would do. Well, between your past and your trauma, you've got two cards face down that I don't know about that you can use to like really throw a wrench into the works. My character is weird and I love it. <laughs> so I also have. <laughs> your character's weird and I love it. Also, mine's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so this is your enclave deck. I'm just going to keep this in front of me while we write things down. But when we're done with character creation, I'll put this out into the center of the table so you can see with your enclave. So we mentioned we're going to be staying at the farm. The farm card will also be up here on the table. We just got a little bit more space because we're doing a podcast. But if we're sitting around the table, things would be a lot closer to us. So in the farm, you get a, a couple of things here that are unique to the farm. The perimeter. When you scout the area around your enclave and set up warning traps, you'll draw from survival. On a hit, you're protected. You'll have fair warning before any threats arrive. On a triumph, everyone in the enclave can clear one stress as they relax. On a miss, you spot signs that something has already crossed your perimeter. Uh, then you also have as a farm fertile fields when you take the time to plant tend to or harvest your food draw on survival on a hit when the next time passes you can clear a food scarcity or hold three which is a uh, three card draws that you can use in the future through the game so it's kind of fun spend your hold to offer food to an npc from another enclave and take a triumph on the ask an npc for help move on a triumph hold one now as well on a miss you'll require special chemicals or supplies to tend to the field and the gm will tell you what you need oh, no. so no. put that there in the center of the table for everyone to see because that's gonna be for our enclave we are also going to go around the table i've got some questions to ask so we've chosen the enclave and we've chosen our survivors you've been dealt your past present your trauma cards choose your stats i'll give you the dry erase uh, marker there that we've got um which comes in the box which is kind of fun uh you have a three two twos and a one that you need to assign to your four stats i panicked and gave the marker to velvet yes you did who's now giving the marker back to me yeah you so still have now, to make this choice now, I have to panic again. <laughs> now these just represent how many cards you draw so whenever you're using a savagery move like violence you will draw that number of cards right more cards you draw you always go with the best card that you draw so when you draw three cards we're only looking at the best of those three mm. uh and so um so if you only draw one you're just dealing with whatever you you, you pull out um and you'll be very reliant on help and interference where if you draw three cards whenever you help or interfere you draw a card when you help or interfere and you swap out the card that the player drew so you can swap out that triumph into a miss and um if they got three cards though it's a lot harder to interfere because they've got three options to move around unless you've got three cards face up in which case they are also drawing three cards to interfere with you right and things then things get real messy on the enclave I'm going to pass this thing around You both with the dry erase board. There's scarcities, things that we're low on, surroundings, what is around us right now, population, what lives in this farm, as well as advantages, which are from this deck of cards that will introduce some new uh, special moves that can be used. Each player is going to pick two from this list. We'll, we'll just go around the table twice, and then you'll each just 
put a dot next to the one you want. It'll come back to me and I'll make a note on my sheet of, of what these things were. So I'll give this to you, Joe, and okay. uh, we'll go around. So I just check. Sorry, I check. Just check off one uh-huh. from any of those lists. So oh, okay. by default, we already have suburban comforts or a scarcity, obviously. We're living okay. out on the farm. Sure. Uh, we also, in this farm, we have a local farming family that's already here. So they're part of this enclave. They're part of our story. So then we get to add to that list with some more things. Okay. So I can check off one from any of the categories. Mm. Uh, oh, all of these look so good. All right. I've made my choice. Um, we are surrounded by a thick forest. Mm. I'm choosing that we have a water source. That sounds really okay. helpful. Yeah. I'll find that in the advantage deck and describe Super it. Super useful. To you. So a water source in particular is another card that's going to come out onto the table next to the farm card. When you fetch water for the Enclave, you will draw survival. On a hit, you will bring back plenty, and everyone in the Enclave can clear one stress. On an edge, you will inadvertently draw danger, and it will follow you home. On a miss, something is wrong with the water. The GM will tell you what has soured the resource. No. Everything's going to bring us stress. Don't worry. Perfect. I'm so excited. Nice. Uh, I'm going to go with a pair of local hunters, I think. It sounds useful. Yeah, we've got a Norman Reedus now. <laughs> yep. yep. Have I ever played a game with you where bows weren't involved? No, no. I don't, that yeah. hasn't happened. No, no, it hasn't. It's not on purpose, I swear. Uh-huh. I'd like to choose privacy as a scarcity. Okay. Wow. Yeah, we're all we're all we're all living in one ranch house, uh-huh. right? There's lots of us. There's there's only a couple of bedrooms. I mean, it, it, the family was already living there. We're all bunked with someone else. No one has room to themselves. So actually, here is Kirby Castleberry, and he's a hunter in this deck. So he's going to represent one half of the pair of hunters. Uh, so you can put that on in just in the center of the table. Uh, so these are. Uh, NPCs that we are meeting that you can approach if you ever want to um, ask for help or direct attention. I'm also going to give each of you allies that live in the Enclave that are friends of yours, work with you in the Prophet. You start with five as wow. well as Whoa. a fifth, as well as a normal ally. Uh, four? That you, you start with four, four sorry. Uh, the, the Tyrant starts with five. Uh, with the, the, the Prophet, you get four allies, but you're also going to get a fifth one that's not a member of your cult, that's just a friend of yours. Uh, so... <laughs> Keep an eye on. It's I'm also just. Those apart. I'm shuffling. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just going through because. And then here's our farm owner. This is the person who leads the family. So they represent the whole family. So this is both. That is like the pair of hunters, and this is the family and the farm, and that's the head of the family there. So so those are the the people. I'm also going to now shuffle this population deck while while you're choosing these options, and I'm going to give you Joe. Mm-hmm. This person is your friend. This is the person that yeah. you can go to for help. They have skills. They have equipment. When you direct them to action, if they have, if you're telling them to do stuff that plays to the things that are listed, you can draw additional cards to help them with that action that you send them out cool. on. Uh, your friend is Darren Spiros, a journalist. That's your ally. and uh, Interesting. For our visionary, yeah. And for our heavy, Very interesting. your ally is a sports store cashier, Sean Wen, <laughs> uh, drawn <laughs> with this uh, shirtless with boxing gloves covered in scars. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, those, those two are friends of yours. And your, your ally, your friend, not part of your cult here, uh, Velvet, is Hazel Namath, a high school teacher. Uh, that totally makes sense. Now, the members of your cult, I'm going to draw out four cards here. These are the four people that represent your followers as a prophet. And they are a little more dedicated to you than the other members of this enclave. It also means the, when we bring the, in a, 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 a something like this, no wonder we've got a scarcity of privacy. Look at all the people you and you alone have brought <laughs> yes. in. So uh, Horatio Conklin, a motivational speaker. Oh, oh wow. perfect. Estella <laughs> Linares, a farmhand, maybe member of the farming family, has mm-hmm. already converted over to following you. Uh, they have. Tasha Fuller, the nurse, and Travis Conrad, the pharmacist. So... I think you're also here to heal the people, uh, aren't you? Uh, in every single way. Yeah, uh, you've got it, you've got the medics on your side. Uh, you are all welcome. Uh, yes, it's they're dedicated to me, not the Enclave. I mm-hmm. mean, we will all help you, of course. Uh, if I chose, we join you, if you yeah. join, of course. Uh, there's great incentive program. Uh, I did choose that we have a group of refugees from the city, oh also part of this Enclave. We have no privacy None. whatsoever. 
So Will you humans. stop inviting people here, Prophet? Uh, <laughs> privacy is a sin. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I will say Priya Gupta, the model, represents our groups of group of refugees. Now, if we want to introduce more, so just put that over to the neutral NPCs. They represent, like, there are more people in the background that will be named, which is also important. If your character dies, you become one. Maybe your next character will be from that group of refugees. We actually played a game where we had a, a, a military group coming in, like, as a coup taking over our enclave when a character died. She drew a new character and went, well, I'm the chaplain working with the soldiers. So while the soldiers were hostile to every player at the table, they were allied with her. Oh, wow. Right? Because oh, wow. I'm keeping track of everyone's disposition. These people are your allies. The people in the middle, they're not allies. They're neutral. They're not necessarily hostile. Not yet. Uh, but they, I'm keeping track of, of how they are disposed to each, each player. And um, what did you there choose? On the Enclave card. Uh, I'm going to go with local maps. Interesting. Mm. As a, an advantage? As an advantage. Okay, yeah. so local maps is another advantage. That also maxes out. No one else can choose any other advantages. Right. Um, okay. uh, you can only choose two from each of the lists. Right. Uh, so uh, strong fences, armory, helicopter, quarantine, generators, cafeteria, fast vehicles, bunker. Here, local maps. Local maps. When you review your maps of the local area, you can assess a bad situation for the area as a whole. The GM will answer your question based on large scale information. On a miss, your maps are beginning to look out of date. And you will exhaust this advantage until you survey the area to update them. So sometimes when you use advantages, like going for the water or going to the local maps, on a miss, it usually means the card will go face down. And it won't be face up and active until you clean the water supply or you do a survey and update your maps. Uh, so you can put that there. So we keep going around until everyone until there's two on each, every list. Each, each person, uh, each person gets two choices I've made on two. that list. So you've already made, I've two. made two. I've made two. You've made two, and Velvet Correct. has made two. So that that wraps us up. So All right. what was I missing? So we've got a a lack of privacy, a group of refugees, and a pair of local hunters, a surrounding thick forest, local maps, water source. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, I'm gonna write this down. And while I'm writing this down, what's the name of our farm? I Visionary. Don't. Oh, 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 it's going to me. Um, you led us here. You're right, I probably did. Yeah. Huckleberry Farms? Yes, it is. Okay. I had a dream about this. You did? Yeah. And it's clearly the right thing to do. I mean, look at all of these natural resources. We have a, a farm we can grow food on. We have people to help us defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. Whatever you guys say. <laughs> I'm not the visionary. <laughs> yeah, not it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you just point me in a direction. And then nice. things, things die happen. in that direction. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like you would most likely get along with the hunters. That the visionary gets along with the refugees and the prophet Probably. and the farm family. Like you've got, right. you've already yes. got these yeah. three groups of population mm -hmm. here. And then uh, surroundings a thick forest. So in one hand, we've got a lack of privacy, which you could work to like build, you know, if you find the wood and start chopping trees and you start building other homes and cabins and stuff for people around the farm, uh, because it's a little bit like in my Shyamalan's village where we're, we're away from the shit of the world on this farm, right? We've got this big surrounding area around that. We got this perimeter that we can work towards and Huckleberry, is that what you're calling it? Yes. 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 Now, is it B-A-R-R-Y? Was the person who originally owned it a, like, is it the berry family? Or is it berry like the fruit? I spelled it like the fruit. So Yeah, let's, let's, let's go with the fruit. Oh. So we'll keep that yeah. there on, on the table in front for you to track. Um, with that, uh, I have given you all an ally. I have given you, you've all got your stats. Now, each of you are just going to introduce yourselves because i got one last thing and then we're done character creation. Um, so give yourself a name and introduce yourself to the Enclave. And then I'm going to draw out relationship questions that each player, you're each going to get one for the people at you. So uh, you'll have a relationship with each other. Mm -hmm. So who's uh, who, who, who are you, Joe? Um, I... Am Sarah Davos, mm -hmm. and uh, I came from the city. I 
met this ragtag crew along the way, along our journeys, and we've been journeying here to the farm since. Mm-hmm. Who's our prophet? My name is uh, Pat Murphy. Lived in a uh, suburban town. Mm-hmm. When the troubles started, I was. You don't have to tell us about your oh. past, right? Because like, right. like your past is a secret. You oh. like you oh, can reveal as much yeah. or as little as you want. Right. This is the story that you tell the enclave. So yeah. So Pat Murphy from the suburbs. I'm a suburban, suburban guy. I uh, I was living a peaceful life. Yeah, Main Street, not <laughs> Wall Street. Oh, for yeah. sure, for sure. <laughs> I I you know I liked being the big fish in a small town. Nice. Well, this is certainly a small tell town. Us about for... the heavy. So the heavy is uh, Jimmy Shane. Uh, I used to be, you know, I lived downtown. I've seen some things once or twice, if you know what I'm saying. Uh, and these guys seem like they know what they're doing. So I'm just going to keep going with them. They made it this far. They need some protection, though. They look yeah. a little thin. Sarah Wait, and Jimmy. Sorry, the two of you had a relationship well before Z Day. Why is it strained and distant now? Now, relationship is entirely up to the two of you how you want sure. to define that. But um, the two of you know each other well before Z Day. Why is it strained and distant now, the heavy and the visionary? Hmm. I think we might have different ideas of where we're going. Okay. So, like, what the plan, what the good, what the what, best plan of action is? The way to survive. Mm-hmm. Jimmy's pretty violent as a character. Okay. I'm getting that impression <laughs> <laughs> from all of the cards in front of me. Um, whereas, I don't know, maybe you're not as violent. Did you, did you max out your savagery? Uh, oh, no, you maxed out your steel. I maxed out steel, yeah. Okay. Oh, shoot, I did too. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Do you, want, you can change that too if you'd like to retcon it around. If you're feeling, oh, maybe Jimmy's going to be real violent. Maybe that's why mm. we have a, yeah, I can do that. Now, the heavy, does the heavy get a bonus to their stat? They do. They get a bonus to savagery. Okay, so when you put three in savagery, you can have a four in savagery. Wow. Which just makes you a monster. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do that. So, right. um... But like, how did we know each other before? Before, yeah. You don't have to answer that. It just says that you used, like, you can if you want. But the question is, why is your relationship strained and distant now? Oh, I see. Because I don't want to force you to reveal who you used to be. Now, because the two of you have passed, I would allow you to share your past cards with each other if you wanted to. Without the knowledge of the rest of the table. Or it would just be retconned when the card, where you would be like, oh, that's why we're... Sure, sure. That's it, why we used might, to be friends. For my card, it might make more sense if we shared. I'm okay with sharing. Yeah. That could. Oh my goodness, this is perfect. Yeah, that's why I was like, okay, yeah. All right. Wow. This wow. couldn't be better. Okay, that... so now you know why you used to be friends. Yes. But now you know why you're distant and strained now. I think we didn't necessarily intend to to be traveling together. No, not at all. Like, yeah. we, we thought we'd end up in different places and yeah. we got stuck together. Yeah. And we, we have, I, I was never supposed to see you again. Yeah. yeah. And we have substantial disagreements in how we should be proceeding. <laughs> yes. yes, we do. Uh, meanwhile, uh, back to Jimmy and Pat. The two of you protected each other from a dangerous member of the Enclave. Who is it and what happened to them? A dangerous member of the Enclave. So that'd be like our... It could be... Sarah, it could be a player, char- a character that's already been introduced on the table here between either our journalist or our store clerk or the members of the cult or, or any of the neutrals in the middle, or it could be a, a new character you introduce right now. But what I'm really interested in is what happened to them when you protected each other from a dangerous member of the Enclave. So I like the idea of it being one of the hunters, because that means that there's going to always be this tension uh, that's present. It doesn't matter to me which one. Which one would you prefer, Kirby or Sandy? I'm indifferent. Oh, I think Sandy's. Oh, the, Sandy's the, the refugees, the, right? No, she's the, the uh, farmhouse, right? Farmhouse, right? Yeah, uh, he, uh, he represents two. Kirby represents the farm. Uh, Sorry, I thought Kirby represented the hunters. Kirby represents the hunter. Yeah, one of them's a hunter. One of them's the farm head, and the other's the model. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and they're right. just on the far end of the table, so I can't see them all from here. So let's just say Kirby, Kirby, because he's on the table. So. You saved my life because I tried to convert Kirby. He, was, he wasn't having it. And he will kill me for a loan. Ooh. Oh. But you're protecting me. But I'm protecting, and he does yeah. not want to mess with me. He just spends right. his time out in the forests 
hunting the deer and bringing back rabbits, keeping people fed, but don't you don't you come near me, snake oil charlatan. Right. Yeah. Is I that like cool? Yeah, I like that. Interesting. I wonder if Kirby. Is that because we've got one member? No, no, no. I like it. We got one member of the farm family in your group of. Oh. He was betrothed too. Yeah, because that could have also have meant maybe the, the the head of the farm might not necessarily be feeling neutral towards you. Oh, sure. Instead of the hunter, it could have right. instead of the hunter, it could have been the farm head. Is like you got my daughter in a cult. <laughs> uh, yes. And yes, I. Do. And you're using my farm, and you're mm-hmm. all you're all living in the barn, and the right. barn's been like turned into your temple. And and the farm head is like, what are you doing? The Lord's work. And <laughs> so is it the hunter that was uh, violent, or was it, or was it Sandy? The let's say farm? Sandy. I like that. I, like I Sandy, think that's yeah. a stronger push. Uh, and there's like a line in the property. You don't come onto the ranch house. He doesn't go onto the barn. But it's also mm-hmm. another reason why there's seen, no privacy. He also hasn't seen his daughter in like two months right. because right. it's uh, you know she's all up with. Whatever it is you're and selling. And if he tries to come near, I'm, I'm there saying, nope, you can't come in the barn. And so you've become, you're not necessarily a follower of the prophet, but you could be if you wanted, but you're definitely their protection. <laughs> you're like, I'm the you're, muscle. You're the closest muscle. thing we've got to like enclave security. Yeah. yeah. All right. Me and my buddy, Sean. Jesus. All right. <laughs> uh, and then last but not least, Pat and Sarah. Yes. The two of you have an intimate relationship. Why are you keeping it hidden? Interesting. Mm. No one would have seen it coming. Uh, 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 why are we keeping it hidden? Why are we keeping it hidden? Um, I mean, what would your followers think? Do you even believe the things you tell them? The visionary has such a different idea of how to survive in this world. I believe that in... Choosing the high road, mm-hmm. I can't talk about the low road, <laughs> and we go pretty low. <laughs> <laughs> All right, All so right. you're sneaking out think... that barn. Oh man, you're you're going into the ranch house that the farmhead has told you not to. Oh. You got this whole uh-huh. wine cellar thing happening. Mm-hmm. And I think, from my perspective, like I don't necessarily want um, people to know about it because I want to be able to have. The objectivity the of objectivity, being, yeah, exactly. like, yeah. like yeah. you're not a yeah. visionary; you're just another fucking convert to this, like yeah. fucking yeah. new yeah. age shit. Yep. <laughs> the, whatever, whatever. Like, is there an honorific title that they call you as their prophet? Like your holiness or master. <laughs> I want to say, I, I just want to say minister. Minister. Sure. minister. The minister. Yeah. yeah. yeah or, like or Father that. Pat. Father Pat. Father yeah. Pat. Yeah. <laughs> like that, that's, that's, yeah. It's just, it's made even more problematic because yes. of the actual father yes. who oh. wants to get his kid back from oh, your no. cult, straight up cult that's right. happening. Look, it's not a cult. People can leave anytime they want to be a zombie. <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, that's just passage to happens. true freedom. There is Fool a Zombie is one of the movies. We haven't, we'll, nice. we'll reveal to that when that happens. All right. So that is um, our setup. That's character creation on Zombie World done and completed. We now have our allies. We have our interconnected relationships. We now know about the things that are happening at Huckleberry Farm. We know about the prophet and their cult, the security that they've conscripted from the heavy, the so the hidden relationship that the prophet has with the visionary who can't get along with the heavy because of their complicated ideas of what the future of this farm will be. Meanwhile, there are other people living in this farm. There is no room for all these people. There's a lack of privacy. There's this thick forest where the hunters are able to at least provide for food and provisions that come in. But with all that, I still have one last card. This is where we're going to end this episode. It's I draw from the fate deck to determine the first thing that happens. It's called Time Passes. Two population members have gone missing. What? Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry. I I should be surprised by that. I mean, oh, no. (laughs) (laughs) And so with that, people in the ranch house is, uh, well, it's the two hunters. They just haven't returned. 
They went out that morning and they haven't come back. And with that also means the food that you would be expecting, the things that keep people fed and safe and happy in this farm. And Kirby's one of the hunters, but the other hunter, the unnamed pair, is Sandy's son, the other member of the farm family. And he goes out there because he knows this area, he knows this farm, he knows this property. And Kirby and his son, want to give him a name? Chuck. Chuck? Sure. Kirby and Chuck, they uh, actually... Or Jack. Let's say I was Jack. Jack, Jack Chuck. as well. Yeah. Jack, Jack, Kirby. Kirby. And then oh, we yeah, have Kirby enough. and Waddle D. Um, <laughs> so Kirby, uh, Kirby and Jack uh, are uh, are the pair of hunters, and they are out. And they left in the morning, and it's sunset, and they haven't returned back. And they're out there in those woods, and those woods are not safe. They're infested, and Sandy's beside himself, and uh, he's trying to get together a group to find his son and find this hunter there are the members of the refugees from the city who are definitely worried and panicked what are we going to do if we don't have any food and and things going on it's like well why don't we just go to pat's barn i bet he's keeping all the extra he's been he's been squirreling away for rainy day bunch of survivalist apocalypse doomsday scenario freak heads we're gonna get the food off of them and things are starting to get real tense when the three of you arrive into the center of this and that's what we're going to come into in our first story episode next week here on Terrible Warriors with uh, the idyllic life of Huckleberry Farm is going to be tested um, and uh, that just that works out nicely so for uh, Terrible Warriors I'm your GM Justin Eacock surrounded by our visionary of a better tomorrow Sarah Davos played by Joe Drummond our prophet of uh, a problematic present. Father Pat Murphy, played by Velvet Duke. And someone with a heavy past. Jimmy Shane, played by Sean Horbachuk. And we'll be back next week for the next episode of Zombie World. Until then, we get to each other. Bye. 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 Bye.